a lot going on. <laughs> hey, what's up? It's Cecily, and it's This Week in Rideshare News. A Nashville Uber driver gets caught using a breathalyzer during a trip, but it's not what you think. I just put in the day I haven't perfected it. <laughs> just had to put in the day I haven't perfected it. <laughs> in the video, you can hear him say, just had this put in today. I haven't perfected it yet. Now the writer actually complained to Uber and received $5 for his trouble. Now I get, you might be concerned that this driver had a DUI or whatever, but you made it to your destination fine and you have proof that your driver was, a, was at least sober. So I don't really get why he complained, but it turns out the driver wasn't reprimanded because one, he doesn't have a DUI and he listed the car as a secondary vehicle on his account and said that the car belonged to a relative. So last week we talked about uh, Uber allowing folks to record rides. Now it turns out Uber has been quietly testing a video recording program in Texas, Florida, and Tennessee. But is safety their only concern? Um, Uber states that the video recordings are part of an initiative to capture objective data about what happens inside vehicles during Uber trips where disputes between riders and drivers play out without witnesses. So once a ride ends, both the rider and the driver can send their video to Uber for review. Now the recording feature is a partnership with a company called Naotu, a technology company that uses artificial intelligence to analyze video from vehicles. Now the company uses technology to detect potential collisions and to warn drivers. It also uses facial recognition to detect distracted drivers and to remind them to keep their eyes on the road. Now the camera also sends footage to Uber if a crash is detected, a serious safety incident is reported, or a driver requests the footage. So if a driver requests the footage, the passenger's faces will be blurred out in the footage. Everything that's sent to Uber employees is visible uh, for review during safety incidents. So these are my concerns. With the software, this company will be able to clock your driving habits, how often you're distracted, how you know possibly you treat your customers, and who's at fault in a collision. Now these things could be good things or bad things because ultimately this footage could be used against you. The company charges $5 a month for this service. Would you be interested in using it? Uber may require identifying documents from passengers in the future. Now Uber passengers that don't use a personalized form of digital payment, um, a credit card or debit card may have to add identifying documents to use the service. On an Uber blog in Chile, they announced a pilot program designed to prevent malicious people from using the app. If the rider uses Uber credits to obtain a ride, they will need to add their ID to start the trip. The only issue I see with this is who's to say that they're adding their own ID? You know, especially if you're like intending to do something horrible, you probably wouldn't say, hey, I'm the one that's gonna do it. Um, I really do think that that selfie technology that they use for drivers um, would be helpful in this case because if something happened, then you could refer back to this person being in the car. So this program will be testing in Brazil in 2020. And my hope is that it will be something that will be coming to the States shortly after. A New York City rideshare driver, Joe McClam, is awarded Lyft Driver of the Year Award. Now, I didn't even know this was a thing, but apparently Lyft asked riders to cast their vote for the best drivers and Joe won. Joe was invited to celebrate his achievement at a party thrown in his honor. The in, on the invite that I saw on Instagram said that he received gifts as well. Um, here he's pictured with John Zimmer, the co-founder of Lyft. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, have you heard of this award? I haven't. <laughs> But I think it's great that people are being acknowledged for their achievements and for doing good work. These are the things that we should be saying in, in, in the news, not these rogue people doing heinous things to helpless people. Man, okay. And this week's What Would You Do? TMZ shares footage of a rideshare driver in Los Angeles forcibly removing a passenger from his vehicle. 
So it was stated that the two got into it because the writer refused to turn the song off playing on her phone. But when the driver told the woman to leave his car, she refused and she called 911. He then proceeds to opening her car door, grabbing her and her things and hurling them into the street. Yikes. So other drivers see what's going on and they get involved and they basically hold the guy down until the police arrive. The woman suffers a black eye, a twisted ankle, and a possible concussion. Surprisingly, the driver response is split down the middle. Now, some say entitled writers will leave you no choice but to escalate a situation until there's nothing else you can do but to force someone out of your vehicle. Now, I'm definitely not excusing this behavior at all, and I feel like he went way too far. But throwing her, her stuff, like, in the street is just absolutely uncalled for. And looking at the footage, he undoubtedly hurt her, and that's there's just nothing that justifies putting your hands on someone, especially if they didn't put their hands on you. But is there a better way to defuse these issues? Should he have waited for the police to arrive? What are your thoughts? Thanks for hanging in there with me. I've got the flu and oh my gosh, it's not good, but I appreciate you guys for watching this video. If you like what you're seeing, please give it a thumbs up. It definitely helps to know that you're out there watching, listening, and supporting. If you're not subscribed to Harry's channel, please subscribe. If you're curious about who I am and what I do, my name is Cecily, and I have a channel called Drive Girl Drive. Peace out. Have a good one.